Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel Physics Surgery and here we are in Pathfinder Solutions series and I have brought forward to you three problems from the topic of impulse and momentum in the book, build up your understanding section 24, 25 and 35. Actually, this is a part two of an already introduced video on vector diagram method, right? So in case you have not watched the part one of this, uh, at the end of that part one, I have given these three as practice problems. So we'll further enhance the the conceptual understanding of this method that I introduced in part one. Okay, right. So we would be moving ahead. And in case you are uh, new and you have not attempted these questions, I'll give you a glimpse of these uh, one by one. And we will try to solve them from the easier ones to the tougher ones. And also each and every problem, if possible, we'll try to solve it in multiple methods, right. So I'll try to convince you how it is different to solve in ground frame and also in the center of mass frame, especially where vectors are involved. Okay, right. Also do wait till the end of the video, uh, because I would be continuing to part three and and whatever practice problems that are required, I, I would say four practice problems I'll give at the end of this video, and that would be covered in part three. Okay, right. So this is the first one, take a pause, try it out for four to five minutes. And this one slightly tougher, and right? maybe another five minutes. And this is the third one, right, which is, uh, um, I would not say it is tough, but it requires a spark that uh, you need to understand about the vector circle diagram method. Okay, so maybe another three or four minutes for this, you would be able to uh, crack this one. So in case you don't, it's fine, right, we'll move ahead, it will be slightly longer video because we'll be taking three problems and also multiple methods within each problem. Okay, so I would request if you are a serious JE aspirant, and you take up a notes notebook and then start watching this video with a pen so that you will start drawing diagrams as I am explaining. Okay, right. So let's start with the first problem. And uh, again, one more reminder, in case you have not watched the part one of this particular uh, vector diagram method, the link of that video is in the description below or in the I button above. So please do watch it. It would be easier because it will look like a continuation of the concept that I already introduced. Okay, right. <clears throat> Problems of part two. This is the first one. I'll start with the formal reading. A shell of mass M is equal to 100 kg explodes at some point on its trajectory into two fragments that fly with momenta P1, some number, and P2, right, making an angle of 60 degrees with each other. So the vector magnitudes are given and also the angle between them. Determine the ratio of masses of the fragments for which the kinetic energy released in the explosion will be minimal and how much is this kinetic energy, okay? So he wants the uh, ratio of these masses so that uh, the kinetic energy released is the least possible value, okay? So this is from the build up your understanding 24th question, <clears throat> okay? I hope you have given it a try. So let me move ahead. A lot of things on the board, okay? So this is the method one of the same problem. I'll solve it in method two also as we move along. So just instead of reading things on your own on the board, just try to concentrate on where I point and what I explain, everything should be fine. Okay, so I've tried to depict the case that he gave in the question. If you have read it carefully, there is a 100 kg bomb moving uh, in space and suddenly it explodes into two fragments whose masses individually are not known and momenta vectors were given already with an angle of 60 degrees between them. Okay, so let the bomb burst into small m and 100 minus small m, right? Uh, the small m is not known. You need to suggest a value of this such that the kinetic energy created during this explosion is least, okay? So the Ke created uh, when you're trying to solve it in the ground frame would be the final kinetic energy of these uh, two fragments in terms of this uh, momentum. I should be able to say it is P1 square divided by 2m and this one is P2 square divided by two times of 100 minus M. That's the mass that I took. Minus the initial kinetic energy that I would say is half into mass of that bomb into U square where U, I think I can find out, right? Because uh, the momentum conservation of the system in ground frame suggests that the momentum in this direction should be nothing but the sum of them vector uh, P1 and P2 at an angle 60 degrees. Okay, so when you try to uh, do that vector summation, 100 U whole square should be P1 square plus P2 square plus 2 P1 P2, 
right? I should have said plus two P one P two into cos sixty. Since all these numericals are given by substituting the values, you should be able to get this value of hundred U or U, which you can get this one here. Why I wrote this as f of m? Because uh, in different possibilities, this small m itself is the variable that uh, changes the value of the kinetic energy created. Okay, so if I want a minimum of this f of m, it is nothing but the minimum of this part because this is a constant, as you could have seen from this calculation. So using the calculus for minima, f dash of m is equal to zero. You can also check the uh, double differential will come out to be greater than zero. Okay. And I differentiated these two terms. You could see one by m gives me one by m square, and this one gives me a minus here. Okay, right, and equal to zero because this constant will not provide any differentiation. So, and when you rearrange, you could see the m by hundred minus m would become p one by p two. I cancel the squares. So, with the p one and p two given as thirty six divided by twenty four. And substituting masses come out to be heavier one is 60 kg and the lighter one comes out to be 40 kg or 3 is to 2 ratio. Therefore, you substitute back this 60 kg into this mass m, then the kinetic energy created minimum value is f of 60, right? And you substitute and substitute the values of all these hundred u's, you'll end up getting this answer given in the book. Okay, so this is what we have done by solving in ground frame. So Let's try to enhance our understanding of this problem uh, by going into center of mass spring. Okay, right. <clears throat> the concept that uh, uh, momentum and the kinetic energy calculations in CM frame have already been covered in two of these lectures. Uh, the links of these videos I'll share during the video as we move along, but these have been done already. So I'm taking the results of those two. Uh, situations. Okay, so in a two-body interaction, whether it is an explosion or collision, momentum of one body in CM frame should be equal to momentum of the other body in the CM frame in opposite directions. The value of it comes out to be a neat mu into v relative. Okay, mu is the reduced mass that has been derived in this lecture. Okay, and kinetic energy of any system can be considered to be kinetic energy of the system in CM frame plus an extra term, which is the half mu v relative square. Okay, this has been done in the revision series video. I'll give you the link, okay, right? So half mu v relative square is the losable form of energy or the energy that would be created in the uh, explosion situations, okay? So these are the two results I would be using in the method two of the solving of same problem. Okay, a lot of things again on the board, just follow my lead. So initially when the bomb is moving, kinetic energy in CM frame would be zero. Okay, so bomb itself is the CM, right? A single bomb is moving. So in that frame, the kinetic energy is zero. Okay, so energy created, which is a frame independent quantity, already been discussed. Okay, so the energy which is created is a chemical form, right? Which is converted to Ke is actually a frame independent quantity and can be easily estimated as that extra term that we saw in the result, half mu u relative square using the CM frame, where the value of V relative is nothing but V1 bar minus V2 bar. Okay, so those two bomb particles moving apart from each other. So the kinetic energy created, if I substitute the value of mu, which is the reduced mass here, and V relative square, which is the vector uh, subtraction of these two situations, this would be V1 square plus V2 square minus two V1 dot V2, the dot product, okay, right? And why I wrote this part in green? The green part is a constant. The sum of the two masses is fixed. The product we don't know, okay? So I'm leaving it in blue, right? And I'll do something nice. Velocities of each body are not known, but the momenta are given in the question. So when I take this M1 and M2 inside and manipulate them in this format, I, I know what is M1 V1, right? Which is P1, the green color one, right? So in order to manipulate that, I'll get a M2 by M1 when I take it inside. Similarly, to convert this into P2 square, I need to have an M1 by M2, okay? And this M1 and M2, when you go into this, it will be nothing but the known value of P1 dot P2. So in this entire expression that I got for the kinetic energy created, uh, the outside part is a constant and this dot product is a constant because of the vectors already given to us, okay? Magnitudes are given, angle between them was also given in the question. So the only minimization that you have to do is for this part of the expression, 
okay so we need minimum of this and here one more thing it is the sum of two variables but their product is constant can you see when you multiply these two numbers you get a constant value so either use calculus but i think we'll try to do something different we have already used calculus in method 1 okay if sum of two numbers have to be minimized and their product is fixed uh, it's encouraging to use am greater than or equal to gm uh, that is arithmetic mean and geometric mean condition and condition for this minima occurs when the numbers are equal to each other okay right so these two have to be equal to each other and you end up getting the same condition that you ended up in the method one the ratio of masses should be the ratio of magnitudes of the momentum which is 3 by 2 and i didn't go further to calculate the rest of things you can do that by substituting the values that you require in here okay so you could arrive at the same answer in both the frames okay right so that's the advantage of learning multiple methods you never know which one will be useful and which one will make it more exciting to solve the future problems okay so with first problem out of our way let's move on to the second one okay before we move on there is another blast problem that i have done from pathfinder which is the comprehension and uh, in that also energy with respect to cm frame and all that was done also the wrong key in the book was corrected in this passage question so it's a must see if you are a new student so link of this also i'm sharing in the description or in the i button above okay once this is done please do watch that one so let's come to the second question okay a ball moving with a uniform velocity in free space collides with another stationary identical ball and thereafter each of them move at an angle of 30 degrees from the initial direction of motion of the first ball okay find the fraction of the initial kinetic energy lost in the collision and coefficient of restitution okay so he is talking about one ball moving another one stationary and after the collision each of them diverge off at 30 degrees from the initial motion of the first ball so he's asking how much ke is lost and thereby also asking you the coefficient of restitution of the collision so this is the build up of your understanding 25th one i hope you have given it a proper try again we'll move ahead with the solving of the question so as i said uh, i'll give you the links of the vector diagram method and the sources that i have already produced in this channel this is a lecture that is from my old channel i have already shared it many number of times so in case you are new please do go through this lecture to understand this vector diagram in a much more elaborate and a very slow manner okay so this one i am putting it in the description below i also in this particular channel i have taken up a revision series video on center of mass and collisions 60 plus problems including lot of important pyq in a sequential order to revise the entire topic was done it was a big hit at that particular point of time uh, so please make sure you watch this one and specifically the vector diagram method problems start at 64th minute in this one and a half hour video so link of this also is shared in the description below so please go through uh, if, in case you don't want to watch the entire lecture of the previous one you can directly go to this video okay so now, the, uh, in case you don't want to watch any of those, uh, let me try my best to uh, revise the concept that is required to uh, attack this problem, the one that we just now read. Okay, so this one, this problem we are going to attempt, right, using the vector diagram. Okay, so the two body collision in CM frame, again, lot of things on the board, just follow my lead. Okay, so there are three sections in the board, we'll go from left to right. If two bodies that he mentioned the question are going in the opposite directions to each other, right? P1 and P2 are the initial momentum. I'm, I'm discussing a concept here. This is not the problem, okay? In the problem, one of the bodies was at rest. So I'm taking a general situation. So if you write the value of P1 is M1, U1, that is the first ball. The second ball, which is coming towards it is M2, U2. Then UCM simply becomes the value of P1 bar plus P2 bar divided by M1 plus M2. Okay, right. Now, when you go into the CM frame, right, these momenta would be equal and opposite. We have already discussed this. This this value would be mu into V relative. Okay, so let's suppose this green color momentum of each object, right, which was in ground frame, different magnitudes, but in CM frame, they should be of equal magnitudes. So this one, I am considering it as X. Throughout this video, also in the past videos, you might have seen that the initial values are always 
written this way and the final values are always written with a prime this language i use from the erodos language erodos book theory book right so this prime is the way to represent the final values so the final value of the first ball after the collision is done is represented in yellow and since in cm frame even after the collision also the momentum has to be zero therefore the other ball has to move equally and oppositely to the first one so let's say the magnitude of the momentum of each of these balls in cm frame after collision is y so x need not be equal to y i have tried to show it in a slightly shorter magnitude okay so remember in all of this we are in center of mass frame so the kinetic energy right created in cm frame is the kinetic energy created in the system right or the lost created or lost we have to decide so the value of the kinetic energy before is nothing but this magnitude of momentum converted to ke is this number x square divided by 2m1 and this one contributes towards this similarly the kinetic energy in the after math of the collision would be this and this converted this manner we uh, uh, we understand that in collision the uh, energy could be lost therefore initial value is either greater or equal in a special case to the final value and you could see that x square if you take common here and y square you take common here the rest of the term can be cancelled off so you can either have x greater than y or x equal to y as the two possibilities and x greater than y happens when it is a inelastic collision and x equal to y happens when e is equal to 1 and in a very specific perfectly inelastic collision when e is 0 the value of y becomes 0 they just dash into each other and then they don't move anywhere okay right so all these concepts were covered again in those previous lectures so that i wanted to discuss them in short before i move on to the solution okay finally in the ground frame right imagine all these calculations in cm frame were done and you want to move on to the ground frame then the value of this p1 prime which is the final momentum in ground frame if it is single system that i am talking about here okay so then if it is double subscript then it is center of mass frame and if it's single subscript we are looking at the ground frame okay so this is equal to m1 times of velocity of the body in cm frame finally plus the velocity of cm i wrote u because well center of mass velocity doesn't change before or after and if you consider this as your x momentum magnitude this x that we wrote or sorry this this particular x that we are talking about i should have called it y actually so let me uh change that this should be your y okay because i have represented the yellow in y and also here right this should be y hmm right so this y vector that i got after you should add m1 ucm bar vector m1 so we need to add a vector called m1 ucm bar to the y vector to draw the final uh um, momentum vector of the ball so once you get the momentum of a ball in cm frame after collision in order to convert it into the ground frame momentum always keep this vector ready and that's what this one is all about so if i have m1 multiplied by this that's a red colored vector imagine in the rightward direction that you need to add to this yellow in order to get the final answer and we can do the similar operation for the p2 also okay so keep this this is the gist of understanding of the lecture that we have in uh, the vector diagram okay now how can we apply that to the problem in which second ball was not moving the first ball is only moving okay so p2 is zero let's applying this concept to the problem that we have at hand so in the ground frame only one ball is moving the second ball's null vector is not shown okay right so what would be the center of mass uh, velocity of this situation i think it will be u by 2 because only one mass is moving second mass which is identical in uh, nature um, so the total mass of the system is 2m so center of mass velocity is m um, into uh, sorry u by 2 and therefore you can say that if i divide this vector into two simple parts which is mu by 2 and mu by 2 then ucm bar is equal to u bar by 2 
and p1 cm which is very important right when i want to move to the center of mass frame here okay m into u bar minus u ucm which is u bar by 2 you get this number so in this present problem why i have uh, cut this into two parts is when you do the momentum of first body in cm frame i end up getting this part which i am considering it as half of this object not only that uh, you require m into ucm right La, uh, in the last uh, page we said we require m into ucm bar vector this was an important vector for us right this important vector's value in this problem is m into u bar by 2 so which is interesting because the p1 cm part and also the m ucm bar in this problem are coming out to be the same that's a special problem okay so now coming to the cm frame the green color vector which represents the p1 cm bar is this way and the second object would also be coming towards it right in cm frame both should have equal and opposite in ground frame only one is moving whereas in cm frame both of them are moving okay and after the collision he said that the body is move both the bodies are moving away from each other right this yellow one represents the aftermath in cm frame okay now what you should add to this yellow momentum vector you should add this m u c m bar vector right which is m u bar by 2 which is equal to this green vector in this problem so if you add this green vector to this yellow vector you end up getting the momentum in the ground frame okay right so this blue color one let me change the color the aftermath in the blue color represents right so i can say this one so this this one represents the aftermath in ground frame what he gave in information in the question is that this after uh, the collision in ground frame they move away by 30 degrees each that means this angle should be 30 degrees and this is 30 he is not talking about in cm frame 30 he is talking about ground frame the two objects were seen to be moving at 30 degrees to each other okay so um this I have drawn it in general and if you realize that this 30 and 30 is only possible if listen carefully to this if this value is considered to be some x okay if this value is considered to be some x and if this triangle is taken into account you would see that this green color vector is a median of this side okay right so it's a median of this triangle for this side these two are equal to each other not only that since he is told you that this is 30 and 30 it should also be angular bisector only way a triangle will have its median and angular bisector the same if it becomes a perpendicular bisector to this so this picture by virtue of the information given in the question becomes this type of a triangle that's what i have drawn here okay so this blue and this blue will become now equal to each other for this given two e individual angles being 30 degrees so if this is x and this is 30 degrees then tan 30 will give you that this is x by root 3 right so which means you have got a relation between the momentum of the object in cm frame before and after are in the ratio of 1 is to root 3 and also the angle is 90 degrees and not only that this blue color magnitude now becomes 2x by root 3 now what is this white line that i have drawn remember this uh, vector is the momentum of the second ball after the collision this is the momentum of the first ball which was moving and this is the momentum of the second ball which was at rest if a ball is at rest and is finally having this momentum then you can argue that the force on the ball was in the direction of that momentum you can't say that for the first one because it's moving in that direction so the second ball's momentum is the direction of the force during the collision and that is nothing but the line of impact okay so this dotted line that i have drawn is the line of impact uh, the loi as i call it so the loi is very important because we need to write the e equation along loi okay right so loi is determined individual magnitudes of the uh, momentum are def de uh, defined because their masses are same you can say that their speeds are also same okay so what is the fraction of the ke lost you have to calculate the green uh, sorry this blue color kinetic energy uh, 
remember these are momentum diagrams you have to convert them into kinetic energy this blue color kinetic energy minus this blue color kinetic energy that is the value of the ke difference since it is lost you have to calculate initial minus final so what is this uh, total blue value remember if mu by 2 was taken as x mu by 2 was taken as x these blue and uh, sorry this green and red are the same then this entire thing is 2x okay then that's what i have written 2x whole square divided by 2m was the initial kinetic energy minus the kinetic energy of each of these arrows is the same that's why two times of individual one which is 2x by root 3 whole square divided by 2m subtraction divided by the initial value is the fraction subtraction by initial value is the fraction you'll get 1 minus 2 by 3 which is one third of the fraction is lost and also along the line of impact this direction the e equation is written as minus of change in velocity of the uh, sorry uh, difference of the velocity of the two bodies in the line of impact direction divided by the difference of velocities in the direction of a line of impact before so in the final diagram can you see this 2x by root 3 this 2x by root 3 makes an angle of 60 degrees with line of impact therefore i have a cos 60 minus this 2x by 3 which is already in line of impact direction i've written as it is whereas in the denominator this entire 2x which obviously makes an angle of 60 degrees with this line of impact has to be taken cos 60 right sorry um not cos 60 this line is in this direction right therefore angle made with line of impact is 30 degrees so this 2x has to be written with cos 30 minus the second body was not having any velocity i have not written any zero right so uh, actually these are subtraction of velocities by subtraction of velocities i have written momenta i can take this luxury because masses are equal otherwise i should have divided them with their masses since masses are equal they got cancelled and again with all two x's and root everything gets cancelled and give you the x and uh, the the uh, coefficient of restitution as one by three okay right so this is the way you solve it using the vector diagram method okay now if i want to solve this in using a easier and a straightforward way and why did i do the method one which was slightly more difficult in a vector diagram form is that to give you the perspective of how that vector diagram goes about i started with the difficult method a more straightforward one is right now on the board we'll finish this and then we'll move on to the third problem in which the vector diagram method would be the easier one okay so so um again a lot of things on the board let me explain slowly one by one uh, this is red one represents the moving ball this gray colored one represents the stationary ball we are solving the same problem using a easier one u is this direction okay now the line of impact during collision is this dotted line and a dotted line which can be drawn perpendicular to that i have represented it using this perpendicular symbol is this way and since uh, this and this are having an angle of uh, 30 degrees i should say uh, this this should be 30 degrees right no I think that 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 is correctly 60 degrees because um, I'll explain how this is 60 degrees. So this is the line of impact for this one. The angle between this line of impact and the original velocity is 30 degrees. Okay, how this came out to be 60, we'll discuss. Now, uh, in the final form, when the two objects are moving, uh, this ball is moving with V, making 30 degrees with X axis. X axis is this direction. And this gray one moves along line of impact, making another 30 degrees below X axis. I am calling that velocity as V prime. And the uh, direction which was drawn perpendicular to the uh, line of impact was also shown here. And now you could see that uh, this particular angle should be equal to 30 degrees because this total is 90 individually these two are 30 so this has to be 30 and some of these two here is 60 is what i want wanted to mark here i hope that completes the story of these diagrams right now conservation of linear momentum that is colm of combined system of the two balls in y directionality that is this way 
in this y direction there was no motion in the start in the y direction and therefore there should not be any momentum in the y direction so zero initially should be equal to mass of each object multiplied by the v's contribution in y direction do you see that this entire angle is against uh, 60 degrees i could have written cos 60 or sin 30 that's what i have written minus this one's contribution in the downward direction which is v prime sin 30 so you could see the cancellation of this and you get magnitudes of these two speeds are same which is what we got even in the vector diagram in the previous method right this is one equation second one the conservation of linear momentum of only the red ball that is single ball um, on this this ball there is a force in the line of impact direction therefore there is no force in the perpendicular direction so in that perpendicular direction i would conserve the momentum of the single ball which means the velocity of the ball in this perpendicular direction, which is u cos 60, this one, should be equal to the velocity of this ball in this direction, which is v cos 30. You see, this angle is 30. In all of this, we are assuming that the balls are smooth, which was not given in the question, but most of the times whenever JE problems you are supposed to numerically solve, if nothing is mentioned about friction, we'll assume that there is no frictional force. That, that is the reason why I'm able to do the COLM, conservation of linear momentum in the perpendicular direction. So solving these two, you'll get V is U by root three. So with V prime and V in terms of U that is there, now I can write the E equation along the line of impact. Okay, so once I do that, let me pull this one up. This would be the E equation. I've already written that along the line of impact, along this direction same as the previous one. It's just that now you have to cancel these values because both of them are known in terms of u. And you would end up getting the same answer as I got in the vector diagram method. And then you go back and solve for the kinetic energy values and then to get the fraction also the same. I have not completed the method, just wanted to show you the importance of both methods, how to solve using vector diagrams and also how to solve it in a traditional manner. Here, the traditional manner seems to be the easier looking method. Okay, the vector diagram looks tough to understand, but is it worth it? Yes, it is, as you would understand as we move into the third problem and also the part three of the video. So this is the last one, right? And once this is done, I'll introduce you to the practice problems. So two balls of unequal masses this time, moving in opposite directions with equal speeds collide elastically. Interesting, they have changed the value of mass, but speeds are now the same. Thereafter, the heavier particle is observed deviated from its original direction of motion by an angle of alpha equal to 30 degrees in the lab frame and by an angle of beta equal to 60 degrees in the center of mass frame. How many times of the mass of the lighter ball is the mass of the heavier ball? Okay, right. So now he's playing with the angles uh, in CM frame and in the ground frame, which you could clearly get it from the vector diagram. Solving this problem in the ground frame would be a more tougher one. Okay, so let's try to see directly from vector diagram. Again, a lot of things on the board. Let me explain step by step. Just like in the previous few problems, first I'll let me draw the two momenta in ground frame. This is the diagram drawn in ground frame. So M1 is, I'm assuming, heavier object with the same speed compared to M2, lighter one, also having the same speed. Now, UCM magnitude wise would be simply M1 minus M2 by M1 plus M2 into U. Simple uh, momentum uh, uh, of the center of mass calculation. Now, what is the value of momentum of one object in CM frame? I should write M1 into U minus UCM or substitute or already directly use the result. Both are same. If you substitute, you end up getting this result, which is nothing but I carefully wrote it for your understanding as reduced mass into relative speed. What is the relative speed in this problem? To you. Check it out. It will come out to be the same. With confidence, you can skip these two steps and directly write this step. That's the important point of mu into u relative. Now, the important part of this is I want to write this uh, momentum of the first body in CM frame carefully by merging M1 and U. I wrote that part in blue because that represents this vector multiplied by a fraction. Do you see the fraction is 2M2 by M1 plus M2. I wrote it in red for your understanding. This fraction, I'll call it as X. 
and let me explain that okay as we move along you will understand that so the momentum of the first ball in cm frame is a x fraction of m1 u its momentum in ground frame similarly i want m1 u cm because this vector is very important remember you want to convert any momentum in cm frame to ground frame you need this vector to be added up so i want this calculation also done before i move to the diagram so value of m1 into ucm is m1 into this number okay i wrote it this way again i want to write it as a fraction of m1 u which i am writing it as y so the value of y is this yellow color m1 minus m2 by m1 plus m2 i repeat p1 cm vector is x times of the m1 u vector and m1 ucm vector is y times of the same m1 u vector okay so these are the two things now how do you write the p1 cm in prime prime means the final value it should be this number and this number is the p1 prime bar minus ucm bar and that's the reason why i kept this one ready for my understanding so the final momentum of the first body heavier body in uh, ground frame would be its value in cm frame plus this vector which is always in the horizontal or the same direction as the initial momentum direction okay right so keep these things ready now how do you represent the value of the p1 cm this red colored part is a fraction of this entire blue color one okay so the blue one was this big and a fraction of that uh, blue one was this red colored one this one and the opposite vector of the two objects would collide with each other in cm frame in cm frame these two should be equal in magnitude right and then after the collision because it is elastic in nature the momentum magnitude should be the same remember i wrote uh, in the past slide let me go back to enhance your understanding there we wrote it here this one right if e is equal to 1 then this magnitudes are equal to each other okay so that's where i borrowed in the last problem he was kind enough to already mention he was kind enough to already mention that this is elastically colliding so i am sure that after the collision is done the magnitude of the momentum remains the same as the initial in cm frame that's the luxury of cm frame so we don't know how uh, the things would have rotated uh, he was kind enough to tell that in cm frame the deviation from the original direction is 60 degrees he told that now how to get the ground frame vector the ground frame vector is got by adding to this p1 prime cm p1 prime cm this m1 u cm now i have to add i don't know how much fraction of this one is uh, i don't it could be here it could be here it could be here but it should be that line which makes an angle of 30 degrees with this line that's what the deviation is all about so just pick this important vector that i have drawn here this direction that red colored one 60 degrees and this original blue direction i wrote it i need that vector which is the final p1 prime which makes an angle of 30 degrees so i have drawn a vector which makes an angle of 30 degrees and in this triangle if this is 60 this is 30 then this has to be 30 degrees which means this should be an isosceles triangle so that means i need to draw that yellow line here you could have just imagined in your mind you, you could have drawn many yellow lines right out of all these yellow lines you should choose that yellow line which will satisfy the below triangle and only way that it can be isosceles and have this 30 is that it forms this here it is here do you see do you understand that that is only when these two are equal to each other okay and that he has given us 30 degrees okay so it satisfies the condition given in the problem that this becomes 30 degrees and this is only possible if this red color fraction which is this x m1 u should be equal to remember in this vector diagram this should be m1 u cm which means it should be equal to this number so the only way this entire information in this problem matches with each other is when these two are equal to each other i repeat in this vector addition this is this vector 
this one should be this bottom vector okay right and whereas in this diagram this red one is this vector so if this diagram and this diagram should be equivalent to each other this part of the blue one and this part of the red one should be equal to each other which is as good as saying x is equal to y so making sure that you understood that i can now imply that x is equal to y gives you directly the result that we require so since x is y this fraction i built and this fraction i built should be equal to each other cancel and rearrange the heavier mass divided by the lighter mass simply comes out to be 3 okay right so with practice and with understanding of this vector diagram the solution of these problems becomes easier is it easy uh, in the first go a lot of the students who would have survived till the end of this video uh, would realize that this is not that easy a method when you are introduced to this method for the first or second time it will definitely take three or four viewings before you can start mastering this method and then practice four or five problems on this in order to actually get this one into your, uh, into your complete mindset okay when it was introduced to me by my teacher during my coaching times it took me at least one month that is after four or five revisions i was able to get to this okay that's why your practice problems are very important and i hope now you are eager to see what are those practice problems before i go to the practice problems a simple thing for new students here there is a website and uh, for this particular channel um, there are some advantages of that website which you won't get in the youtube channel and vice versa so i have made a video on how to use that website website and there are some problem sets in that particular website i keep updating them so please make sure you watch that video the link of which is in the description below so that you can uh, start taking advantage of it so now the practice problems okay i have chosen irido this time to pick four problems from it one after another in the sequence of difficulty so that you can uh, you, you can solve these problems using um, normal methods also traditional ones but i would urge you to solve them using the vector diagram method to compensate for your understanding here okay so that you can check whether your answers are right and you start moving one problem into another and another problem into another you start feeling more and more smooth in the usage of that method and you will start getting answers quickly so by a uh, tick this one is the se first, second one is head on head on also you can use vectors but it will be straight vectors okay so uh, try the first part of this question second one is this 1.169 in which again there is a head-on collision problem that you can avoid and try the least try the one where the divergence angle is given and the third one is 1.170 again a very simple question uh, you can start you can try it out using the vector diagram and the last one is 1.173 where there is no elastic collision uh, and this also you would love it once you uh, attempt it using the vector diagram method okay so you want to uh, see some more series other than pathfinder solution i have only written four here uh, there are many more that are running in the channel so links of all of those important uh, series and their uh, descriptions are given in the description below so please make sure you patiently go through them also all the sources that i have or already pointed out about the lectures vector diagram methods previously solved pathfinder solutions everything is there in the description try to spend enough time there and uh, um, in case you have reached here and you like the content that you have been seeing right now please do give it a like liked videos go to more and more students so thereby helping me reach out to a wider audience because i make the videos with lots of passion and you, you see that in the way that i produce them also share them so that more and more subscribers come to my channel in case you have not subscribed please do think about subscribing it in case you didn't like the video it's fine if the fate and youtube algorithm have their say then we will definitely meet in the next video Till then, see you and take care.